You know what's funny is as preseason continues to get closer and closer and Panthers football is only a couple hours away, things come from excitement to a little bit of anxiety. I mean, because this game coming up on Saturday, the Panthers' first preseason game versus the Jets, may be a little bit more significant than we once thought. Like the more and more I sit back in my chair and think about it, I'm like, this, the stakes may not be as high because it's preseason, but there's definitely a lot on the line in this game for the Carolina Panthers, man. And I just want to touch on a few couple things that's on my brain because this game is going to be, it's one of the all eyes on them game because it's, uh, of course, the hype around Aaron Rodgers and the Jets, even though Rodgers may or may not play. Hard knocks. Bryce Young, the hype has been crazy at training camp. And I've been all over the coverage of training camp and telling you how the hype is and just how he's performed in practice. If you haven't really kept up with that, you can go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Check my playlist from training camp, man. I do recap and analysis of the Panthers. So go ahead and look at all that to get all the inside scoop on Bryce but will all this stuff that happened that I've seen and I've been telling you about and then we all have kind of been getting excited about will that translate over but that's not the only question there's a lot of things to get into so I'm gonna go ahead and preview the game with some of the question marks and the things that I think that could be at stake for this game we're starting right now And I think starting with Bryce Young is obviously the easiest way to start because there's just all eyes are going to be on Bryce, man, like they, they, whether they're Panthers fans or outside of this fan base. There's us Panthers fans that are excited about him, want to see him in action for the first time at Make of America Stadium. But there's also a subset of people in the media and just outside that are very skeptical and doubting Bryce Young. They don't even think Bryce Young can take an NFL hit before he's going to break in half. There's literally people preying on Bryce Young's downfall just because he's so outside of the mold. If they're wrong about him, it's going to question everything they know about football. So it's weird like that, but that's kind of how the internet works and where NFL fanship is at this point. But not just that. After watching C.J. Stroud, who a lot of fans for the Carolina Panthers were kind of going back and forth with him and Bryce as far as drafting him. After he looked last night where the game just seemed kind of fast for him, he had some struggles without their offensive line being uh, fully healthy and in the lineup. It makes you a little bit skeptical. It's like, okay, hey, Stroud in college was – he was good. And granted, he was the number two overall pick. Some people questioned, was he a system quarterback? Was it the targets? He was a good quarterback regardless of what you say. And even last night, he looked shell-shocked in his first game, which is normal for a rookie quarterback. But everything we've heard is Bryce Young is kind of head and shoulders above that, and he's not going to do, do this, that, or the third, and he's good at processing and all this and that. But all that can change when you have grown men that are the size of uh, mountains running at you. You know what I'm saying? And with our camp struggles in the offensive line, I don't want to see Bryce Young taking too many hits and too many uh, uh, uh be under pressure too much because we, well, a lot of people are questioning how many drives will Bryce Young actually play, and I don't know. We'll see. Uh, Frank Wright swears he's going to do it by field, but we all know that things can change quickly and stuff is fluid in terms of preseason. If he goes out there and stinks up the joint, maybe they pull him quick. If he goes out there and has a 10-play drive and throws a touchdown to finish it off, he's probably done for the night. There's just a lot of different question marks, and I think that Bryce Young has a lot to prove, not only to uh, the league, but also to some Panthers fans that are a little bit skeptical and just curious how Bryce Young is going to perform. But like I said, the length of how much time he actually plays, that is to be determined, but I would love for him to get a couple series, get in, get out, but there are question marks still there of how Bryce Young will look. Now, do I expect him to kind of set the world on fire or or – or what I overreact that happens, probably for the moment. But once I go back and watch the tape, obviously we're trying to take things in stride, put things in context. It is preseason, but I still think that I want to see a little bit better from CJ. I want to see a little bit of comfortability. I want to see maybe if he gets tapped a little bit, can he take that hit and get back up? And can he deliver and sit in the pocket? So that's just what I want to see from Bryce, and I think that's just something he's got to prove. But even with him only playing a couple series, what are the Panthers going to do at – the rest of the quarterback for the rest of the game. And that goes up to my next point about what's going on because we've heard that Andy Dalton most likely will not play. Okay, so that leaves you with Matt Corral and Jake Ludon. I'm going to tell you right now, Jake Ludon has taken one rep in camp. I was, I was there. I told you guys, go check out that playlist from last episode. I told you guys, Jake Luton has only played one snap of 7 on 7. Now, I know he participates in individual drills, so he probably knows the footwork with handoffs. I know he throws routes on air. He probably uh, does th throw those one-on-ones as well. So he has some experience, but it's just hard for me to see that a guy going out there cold turkey, even if it's preseason, playing. So that tells me that uh, Matt Corral is going to play a lot. A lot, especially if Andy Dalton's sitting out. So what will we see from Matt Corral? Matt Corral, I think he'll probably be sticking around as that quarterback three. But this fan base, I mean, excuse me, this coaching staff did not draft Matt, Matt Corral. 
He did. He was a Matt Rule product that we traded up for. Obviously, he got hurt in preseason last year, so we didn't really see but a game and some change from him. He's going to get as much playing time as he can handle this year, and it seems like they're going to throw him to the wolves. He's gotten some reps. He has slowly kind of progressed, but he's still been getting the short end of the stick on reps in practice. He's going to get force-fed all that he wants right now coming into this game. So how much will he play? How will he perform? Because, like I said, last we saw him, he had that Liz Frank injury on his foot up in uh, New England. So what's going to happen? Will he get to play with better players? Now he's going to probably be the second quarterback off because I think a lot of his trouble last year was playing with some threes and fours of guys that probably didn't make the team. This year, he's going to play with some backups, but some of these backups that we had started for us. Michael Jordan, he was a starter for us at one point. Cam Irving, unfortunately, he was a starter for us at one point. So some of these guys have starting experience. He'll be playing with those guys. Maybe Terrace or Mingo will be playing in the game with him as well. He's going to get better talent around him. So how exactly will Matt Corral perform? Hey, you, you real quick. Hey, you watching. If you're a Panthers fan or you're just somebody that's curious about how Bryce Young's career is going to lay out and how things play out, and you just want to keep up with that, hit that subscribe button down below, man. I'm Aaron Duncan. I cover the Panthers. I'm all over it clearly, and we're growing as a channel, and I really appreciate if you consider subscribing. Don't be a creep. Don't just watch and don't like and don't subscribe. Hit that subscribe button, and also give this video a thumbs up. It really helps me out in the algorithm with the engagement, and it helps spread the message out. More Panthers fans get to see the video, and we can continue to grow as a community. I really appreciate that. But talking about those better players around him as far as protection, that brings me to my next point of odds offensive line because I keep talking about the offensive line having some struggles down the stretch and they did not cease in the joint practice. It wasn't terrible, but interior pressure was coming at times. Yes, I know Quentin Williams is there, but at the same time, this was a consistency in our own practice going against ourselves. And yes, I understand we have Derrick Brown in our team too, but we're not going to play any slouches on the interior during the season. Like I told you guys before, we're opening up with the Falcons who have Grady Jarrett and David Anyamata, two bona fide legit defensive tackles on the interior. So what will guys like uh, Brady Christensen do? What will a guy like Kay Mays, because Kay Mays recently got pulled from the starting lineup. Will he even be in the starting lineup? Everybody thought he was going to step in for Austin Corbett and it just be a seamless transition because he had some playing time last year at fullback. That hasn't been the case, and he's had some struggles. And I understand we haven't really game-planned against the Jets, but he struggled against ourselves. He has got pulled for the lineup for Justin McCray, who's pretty much a swing interior lineman, the backup center. So – Will K. Mays get that start? Will he be able to progress and show enough promise where James Campbell is confident and put him inside? Because you have to protect the investment of Bryce Young. Interior pressure can neutralize any quarterback, but it's even more fatal for a shorter quarterback like Bryce. He needs to feel clean with the pressure coming up front because it's a lot harder to escape that. We saw that with C.J. Stroud last night. Of course, Bryce Young is way more mobile and, and slippery than C.J. Stroud, but it can neutralize any quarterback when you have that interior pressure. So how would that line up? But is that, But also, with that interior lineman, we're going to probably get a look at Chandler Zavala. Now, will they play him? I don't know. He's only been back to practice for about a week or so. But will he get a chance to play? And will he show enough to be like, okay, let's give him some more reps, maybe with the second team. You know what I'm saying? And maybe will he ease his way into being a starter? I know he's probably going to play left guard, but listen. We need help at right guard. I think Brady Christensen has got by at times, and he struggled, of course, as well. But I think the more pressing need is that right guard over left guard. So we'll see what they do with Zavala. Like I said, he hasn't been in camp much because of the injury. But will he stay healthy, and what will he show on that field? You guys let me know down below in the comments how you feel about the interior offensive line. Like, what questions do you have about them going into tomorrow's game versus the Jets? But that's going to take me to the defense because – is the defense. They had they took their lumps. They dominated all camp against themselves, right? our offense, of course. But when Rodgers came to town, even though he's super elite, they didn't have Garrett Wilson, but Aaron Rodgers was dotting that defense up. I personally saw J.C. Horn give up a couple, a couple passes, and they hit him with the long ball, hit him with the short ball, back shoulder. Aaron Rodgers, I mean, he's legit. Let's be for real. He's legit, but – we need to show that we're up to the task. If we think our secondary is going to be as good as we hope, especially with healthy, because a lot of the times our skepticism is just them being healthy. So they were healthy at joint practices, but they still got pieced up by Aaron Rodgers. So I know Rodgers may not play, but can you come out and show a little bit of energy, show a little bit of, I guess, dominance since you're going against more of a backup second unit? And what exactly are we going to get from you guys? You know, because Obviously, we hope the D-line can do their thing, but 
A lot of it is going to have to be based on that secondary. We won't get the exact answers that we want to see if they're for real, but I definitely want to see them play to the competition. You know, if the competition may be below you, you should dominate them since you're the starters. And that's what I expect to happen, and that's what I hope happens, but we just really don't know. And that kind of has me wanting to stroke my chin and look at them like, okay, what y'all going to do? All right, what y'all going to do? We'll see if they take it personally and bounce back because it was very uncharacteristic from what we saw in training camp. For most of the camp, they pretty much dominated. But we'll see what happens when the going gets tough and ish gets real. You know what I'm saying? But, but speaking of the defense, the one particular spot I want to look at on the defense is the edge position because there's a lot of competition there. And guys like Kobe Jones and Iku Leota have really emerged. Two guys that we really didn't expect when we had some issues. Obviously, we know Justin Houston was brought in, and I don't expect him to play at all. But a lot of this stuff is going to be rotational. What is going to happen with a guy like YGM, who, in my opinion, could potentially be on the bubble? I think he's going to be a lot to get in just because he can play inside as well and pass rushing area. But what is he going to do on the edge position? What is a guy, does the backups put pressure on him? Because Kobe Jones and Iku Leota, I don't think there's a lot of room in our edge, our not edge position on the depth chart for everybody to get in. Is a guy like YGM the I man out? Is a guy like Amari Barno who was drafted by a previous regime the I man out? Because Amari Barno had a pretty solid preseason last year. He kind of stepped up in the joint practices as well, but he had some struggles during camp where he really didn't. He really didn't make as much noise as a guy like Kobe or Ikulio and really got overshadowed by them. He wasn't just playing bad, but it was just other guys were that were not as highly touted as him in terms of just being a draft pick. They kind of showed what they could do and showed it consistently. They played a lot more hungrier. Will Barno be able to apply that pressure and use that speed that we've seen from him? Like I said, he had a pretty solid uh, training camp, excuse me, preseason last year when he played. I want to see what he can do as well. And is he going to be on special teams? Will that be what secures his roster spot? We don't know. That's why I have these questions, and I'm asking this question in this video about how significant this stuff could be. And I know it's just the first game, but I think a lot of Panthers fans are excited about things, and they want to see these guys live up to the bill. But that's just not all. Wide receiver. I think we're a lot curious about Jonathan Mingo. I told you about his struggles with drops. I made it clear, but he pretty much had a day against the Jets. He was the go-to wide receiver against the Jets in that joint practice. This is the first time we've seen him and Bryce hook up consistently for big plays, first downs, just doing the out routes, short routes, going deep down the middle in the scene from the slot. We saw everything from Jonathan Mingo that we wanted to see and we've been waiting to see, and I was super excited about that. Can he parlay that into more game action? Because he may likely... Play with a little bit of Bryce. We know he was wide receiver one, quote unquote, on the depth chart, at least a starter for that third wide receiver on the depth chart. But I expect him to get some playing time with Matt Corral. And they have history from college. So will he get to produce? Will he show us and show people what to get excited about? Will he continue that momentum from yesterday, uh, the other day's practice into the game? We shall see. But not just him. Terrace Marshall Jr. I was shocked personally to see him behind DJ Chark on that depth chart, not to start over uh, him, but the fact that Mingo was listed as the first wide receiver for a certain position, but TMJ was the backup. Not to overanalyze the depth chart, but I'm just saying, TMJ has been running with the twos at times. He's had some great days throwing with Dalton. I want to see him get some more playing time with the ones. I want to see what he does against the twos because if you're playing against backup corners and we're trying to see if you can prove that you're a wide receiver one potentially, you should be out there and go and make splash plays and make a name for yourself. I don't know what chemistry him and Matt Corral have and how much he'll play with Matt Corral, but I would expect him to make a statement if he gets the ball thrown his way, especially against some guys that we think that talent-wise he should be above as far as in terms of the opposition who may be playing twos and threes by the time TMJ gets in. So I want to see if he can kind of show that, hey, I, be I belong with the bigger guys. You see what I'm doing with the backup guys? I belong with the bigger guys. So that's what I'm curious about from the wide receiver position. But last but not least, the tight end group, which has been much maligned over the years but has been upgraded with the addition of Hayden Hurst. Hayden Hurst is not who I'm worried about. There's a variety of skills in this tight end room, but we know Ian Thomas is not a fan favorite, but he's been sticking around. Uh, the whole tight end group has been getting a lot of praise. Tommy has progressed. Steven Sullivan has flashed. He had a great joint practice himself, catching two touchdowns in the red zone, catching that passes over the middle. He was starting to fight. We have a, a plethora of different skill sets. Will these guys force them to keep four tight ends? And if the competition is too stiff, will there be a surprise cut? I don't think Tommy gets cut, but I think the person that's pretty much on the bubble is going to be Ian Thomas and or Steven Sullivan. I think Richie may be spoken for. 
Unfortunately, he has some struggles in camp. I know he plays special teams, but that's just kind of how the ball falls. But I want to see if our tight end group can actually have a pulse. There's been times in certain games in the past where we didn't even know we had a tight end on the field. We just thought it might have been an extra blocker or a guy just running, running for cardio. You know what I'm saying? Because we just have had a lack of production. So will the uh, the attention that has been given in this offense to the tight end position, will that translate over as well? It's probably one of my bigger questions. But the guys I'm excited to see, obviously Bryce. I want to see uh, Brandon Smith, who's a backup linebacker. What will he do in the game? I want to see Kobe Jones. Will he cover? Will he repeat what he's been doing before? Terrace Marshall is on my list. Jonathan Mingo is on my list. Ray John Wright, one of the backup undrafted corners who fans were a lot higher on. I want to see what he does in this. You know what I'm saying? I want to see what Barno does as well and how he kind of answers the call getting this preseason opportunity. Of course, I want to see Nash Jensen, who's an interior alignment. Chandler Zavala as well. These are guys are going to be paying attention to. And so I, I, I'm excited. I'm anxious. I'm nervous. I got all the feels. Panthers football is back, man. I'm so excited. You guys let me know down below in the comments what you're most excited about and what position are you going to be paying attention to the most in this game versus the Jets. I want to get you guys thoughts because you know I love to have me some conversations in the chat. So go ahead and hit them comments. Let me know what's good. If you're watching right now still, make sure you are subscribed, man. A lot of y'all been viewing the videos, but you don't want to be hit the subscribe button. Don't be a creeper. Hit the subscribe button. Hit that like button too. The like button is free. It really helps me out in the algorithm and it goes a long way. And if you want to support the journey as well, you can leave a super chat or a super thanks, whatever you, is your fancy. It's the heart sign with a it's a heart with a dollar sign in the middle of it down below near the like button. It's just a tip jar for creators. And I really appreciate that. Without further ado, I love you guys. I'll see you next time. Peace.